recipe, we're making homemade tomato basil soup. And I'm gonna show you the best canned tomatoes to use for the very best flavor. I think even better than just using fresh. Because you've gotta do a lot of extra steps if you're using fresh, and we're gonna make it simple for you. And I'm also making this dairy-free by using coconut milk, but you could also use dairy if you prefer that. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to make it right after this. All right, I'm gonna start off here with my chef joke. This is chef joke number one. Number two will be just a little bit later. So here we go. What type of tomato smells the best? Aroma. <laughs> so here are the canned tomatoes that you really should try and use. See if you can find these. They cost a little bit more, at least these do. These are San Marzano tomatoes, okay? They're a little bit more expensive, like I said. They come from Italy, they are just primo. They are just delicious, and the way they grow them, you can read about it on the back of the label. Anyway, that's the first one. The second can is we're using some fire-roasted tomatoes. Doesn't matter if they're whole or they're you know, diced or whatever, but you wanna use those. The fire-roasted gives them extra flavor like you've just roasted yours in the oven. So you wanna use both of those. So we're gonna start off with our tomatoes. We're gonna place them into our blender and try not to splatter. Notice I wore a black shirt today for that reason. Now we just wanna blend this up. You might like your tomato soup chunky, a little bit on the chunky side, right? Or you might want it really smooth. So just blend it up the way you like it. So I'm gonna start with this. Now I like mine real smooth, so you're gonna see here how creamy and smooth that is. Now for the second, uh, can. And then we'll pour in our second can. Okay, so to that, I'm gonna place one bay leaf into the tomato sauce. I'm gonna place that on the stove. I'm not even gonna turn it on yet because we got some other things to do. So now that we have our tomatoes in the pan all nice and smooth, now we're gonna work on the flavor that goes into our soup. And we're gonna do that right over here in this frying pan. Okay, so for our flavor, we're gonna take some olive oil, place it in our frying pan here over, I'm starting out at medium heat, and I'm putting a, maybe a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of olive oil in there. And we're gonna work on uh, make, creating a flavor with what is called a mirepoix, which is onion, celery, and carrots. That's a French term that means flavor base. And you should use this for, you know, most soups, not every soup, but for a lot of soups and different sauces. So we'll place my chopped up, I have some, uh, just one yellow onion, place that in the, in the pan there, and along with some carrots and some celery. And we're gonna cook this for, you know, about five, six minutes or so. All right, so while we're waiting for our mirepoix to soften up and cook down and add lots of flavor for our soup, we have time for chef joke number two. Here we go. A man tried to start a fight by throwing dough, shredded cheese, and tomato sauce at me. So I said, you want a pizza me? <laughs> Did you get that one? Now we're gonna add a little bit of salt to this while these are cooking. So here we go. Just a little bit of flavor layer. The mirepoix is probably gonna take closer to 10 minutes, and that's because my carrots are a little bit bigger, thicker than the onions and the celery. And we wanna get those carrots done because what we're gonna do next is put this into our blender and blend it smooth with some chicken broth. So depending on how thick you know your carrots are, you're gonna to have to go a little longer on your cooking, which just brings out more flavor, so don't be afraid of that. You know, we're, we're gonna go probably 10, 11 minutes here on this just to get them soft. All right, when you think your carrots are soft, take your fork and go ahead and poke one. Oh yeah, nice and soft and tender, that way it'll blend up nicely. Time to add our garlic. I have about six cloves of garlic. Yeah, lots of garlic here. I love garlic, and I tell you, we're gonna just mellow out the flavor by cooking this for about one, no more than two minutes. Just move it around on the heat. And that's another flavor booster, let me tell you. And that should do it for the garlic. Turn off the heat. Let this sit and cool for five minutes because it's going in the blender and we don't want it to be too hot. While the mirepoix is cooling, I'm going to take some basil. Remember, this is a tomato basil recipe. And I have a nice stack here. My stuff is getting a little wilty, but that's okay. It's still good. Even though I'm gonna put it in the blender, I'm gonna help it out a bit. I'm gonna roll it up and just slice it up. 
You can get all the ingredients down below in the description of this video. So be sure and click down there and you will find it. All right, time to get this into the blender, carefully of course. Then I'm gonna add some chicken broth here and the basil and some dried thyme. Then we'll just blend that up. Make sure that you're careful because it still could be hot. Here goes our mirepoix mixture, quite thick as you can see. And I still have a little more chicken broth to add to this because it is pretty thick. And you can always add more if you need to, to thin it down. And we're gonna let this simmer for, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so. Remember to remove, however, this, remember our bay leaf? We wanna take that out eventually. But we're gonna let that simmer in there for a little bit longer. Now it's time to add the coconut milk. Now I'm using full fat here. Now if you decide to use dairy, that's, that's fine. You can use heavy cream, you can use you know half and half, whatever you want. Just remember that the higher the fat content, the creamier your soup will be. Now the next thing we need to add, and don't be surprised about this, is some sugar. Now we need the sugar to balance out the acid, okay? Otherwise it's just gonna be, it's gonna be too acidic. So I've got some coconut sugar here that I'm adding to this which is about a tablespoon, and you can use anywhere from one, one to two tablespoons, I think should cut it. And you can use other sweeteners if you want. That's all the ingredients that go into this. Now we're gonna taste it and adjust our seasonings. We might need to add more salt or, you know, even more basil or more sugar, whatever you want. I think it needs a little bit more salt. And that should do it. Our soup is done. Doesn't it look delicious? I tell you, it just looks incredible. Nice and hot. Serve it up here in my bowl. And I happen to have a little basil plant here that I got from a friend. And um, I'm just gonna pick off a leaf or two and just place it on top for garnish. You could garnish this with some Parmesan cheese if you wanted to, or, you know, the basil's good. Let's take a taste and we'll see how we did. Such a wonderful, there's a lot of layers of flavors going on there and I think it's really delicious. I can taste a little hint of garlic, the basil, I can get a little hint of that. And you definitely need that sugar because that really balances out that acid in the tomatoes. So don't leave that out. And you know what would go great with a nice bowl of tomato soup? Grilled cheese sandwiches, right? So I've got the recipe for you. I'm gonna leave a link for you right over here. I show you three different grilled cheese sandwiches right over here, click that and make that along with this soup and you're gonna have a fantastic meal. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the notification bell while you're at it so you'll be notified when new videos come out. Smash the like button and leave me a comment. All right guys, we'll see you next time.